Thank you. Isn't it ironic that on the day I'm giving a talk about the struggles of working mothers, it's my youngest son's seventh birthday. <laughs> of all the days, but I'm going to make the most of this working mum juggling act and create a special memory for him. So please, on the count of three, let's all yell out, happy birthday, Kara. Yell up. Count of three. <laughs> One, two, three. Happy birthday, Kara! I love you, Kuki. I love you, Jim. I get you. Thank you so much. See, that's the mum in Working Mum. I think I better get the working part into gear. I want to start by showing you a few photos. Here's a photo of me marking exams while at my son's soccer training. <laughs> Sorry. And this is a photo of me marking exams while we were watching a Real Madrid Champions League match. <laughs> and this is one which still makes me smile. We were invited to our friend's house for lunch, and we got there, and I headed straight to the kitchen, and you know, Lebanese women arguing over who's preparing what, and of course I offered to help. But they insisted I sit outside and relax. And I'm like, relax? What's that? I'm a working mother of two kids. I don't know how to relax. So I sat outside, and of course, I marked more exams. <laughs> I've got a dozen more of these kinds of photos, but this isn't about me. Oh, who am I kidding? This whole talk is about me. <laughs> but it's also about Ren and Maria and Nisreen and Diana and hundreds and thousands of working mothers all around the world. My journey into giving this talk started with a quote I posted on Facebook. Actually, a quick scan of my Facebook wall shows that clearly I have some issues regarding this working mum thing I've got going on. <laughs> but this one quote in particular, I remember reading on a night I woke up at 2.30 in the morning, wide-eyed and overwhelmed with thoughts of the exams I had to mark, the ones I had to write, the conference presentation and class lectures I had to prepare, my kids' homework and football schedule, and how I was going to make it to their school presentations on time. And I saw this. The obligation for working mothers is a very precise one. The feeling that one ought to work as if one didn't have children, while raising one's children as if one didn't have a job. Wow. Sadly, in our society, the combination of work and family for women is either impossible or at the very least, extremely challenging. When I was a 23-year-old PhD student, my husband and I bumped into my former university professor, and I was telling him how I was so excited to finish my PhD so I could become a university professor myself. He asked us if we were planning to have kids. We said yes. And he then told me, very dramatically by the way, Jumana, academia is very, very hard, especially for women and especially if they have children. And he elaborated with examples and everything. After some back and forth, he ultimately said, you'll have to choose between your career and your family. It's just too hard to have both. Now, I know he meant well, but imagine hearing this as a young, aspiring academic. And he said this in front of my husband, in front of my Lebanese husband. <laughs> Not necessary. <laughs> Despite feeling deflated, I persevered. And guess what, everyone? I'm a university professor. <laughs> and I have a beautiful family. I didn't have to choose after all, and neither do any of you young ladies. That's what I'm trying to show you. I have to confess, I'm a recovering perfectionist. And when I say recovering, my mum will tell you I'm lying. <laughs> it took me ages to even decide on the title of this talk. And I'm still worried people will think I'm arrogant. I promise you, I don't think I'm a super mum. And I'm sure very few working mothers feel they deserve to wear that superhero cape. But this word, super mum, it gets thrown at us left, right and centre, when really, we're just super tired of the challenges of being working mothers. You see, men, they don't have these issues. <laughs> a dad who works isn't even called a working father. He's a dad and he has a job. Men don't get asked on a daily basis or ever how do you balance family and work? Mm -mm. And they definitely don't get asked, where do you leave your kids when you're at work? 
No, because it's culturally acceptable and expected for men to have children and a professional career without having to choose between the two. Now, while women have come a long way in education and in the workplace over the last few years, working mothers still do a majority of the household and child caring duties. Men are coming along at home, but at a much slower pace. Even when dads do take care of their own children, it's considered babysitting. <laughs> babysitting? Babysitting your own children? No, honey, it's not called babysitting. It's called parenting. We <laughs> We would never say a mother is babysitting her own children now, would we? I think I got the answer. <laughs> but, this, but this isn't even half the problem. Did you know that women are more likely to be perfectionists than men? When I became a mother, my perfectionism went into overdrive. And apparently this happens to so many women because we want to be perfect role models for our kids. And this perfectionism extends to other parts of our lives as well. We want to be perfect wives, daughters, sisters, and employees with perfectly manicured nails, pretty ageless faces, and beautiful bodies. It's so much pressure. But this perfectionism is understandable. Today, the bar on what it means to be a good mum is so incredibly high that it's impossible to keep up. We wake up at dawn to prepare super healthy meals and snacks. We obsess over quality time and cram as many fun but educational activities together. We're involved in school projects. We enroll them in sports and music and whatever activity, because that's what good mums do these days. And work today is much more demanding than previous years. Between internet and email and cell phones and WhatsApp, work is invading our nights and our weekends, our personal time, our family time. Work's unlimited access to us just adds more pressure as we try to stay fully committed to our jobs. Because you see, at work, we try to be the consummate professionals. We work exhaustively to be on top of our game, although we're sometimes on three to five hours of interrupted sleep because our breastfeeding baby needs to nurse around the clock, or because our child is sick, and we couldn't even blink an eye because we were so worried. Do you even know how hard it is for breastfeeding women to spend eight, nine, ten consecutive hours at work? They need to pump every few hours. Otherwise, they, in, they endure painful engorgement, embarrassing leaking, and sometimes even infection. I had a long day at work a few years ago, and I had to pump three times at work that day. And one of my colleagues jokingly asked, are you here to pump or are you here to work? Even I laughed. But the struggle is real and very few people are aware of how hard it is. Do you know how hard it is to secure a trusted caretaker with your children when they're sick or they're on school holidays and you still have to slog it out at work? I walked into a meeting recently with my two kids. Now, I admit it wasn't the most professional moment of my career, but it was either that or I couldn't attend my meeting. And somebody laughed and asked, why don't you bring your husband as well? I know it was supposed to be a joke, but it really hurt my feelings. And in case you are wondering, my kids waited patiently outside and didn't bother anyone. I had a pretty proud mummy moment, I have to say. <laughs> and is that for one of <laughs> Between work and family, we spread ourselves so thin that we feel we're not fulfilling any role properly, let alone perfectly. And when things don't work out as perfectly planned, instead of saying, it's OK, I did my best, we sometimes think it's not good enough. It's a failure. Or even worse, I failed. This leads to disappointment, guilt, and self-doubt. Why do we feel this way? Is it only working mothers? Apparently, it's not. At the risk of perpetuating a stereotype, the reality is, Women have confidence issues more than men. In fact, the confidence, issues, sorry, the confidence issues that accompany perfectionism in women are described in a book called The Confidence Code. The, the, the authors claim a vast confidence gap separates the sexes. Women lack self-assurance, overthink their mistakes, think they're less competent than they really are, and routinely underestimate their abilities and their performance. 
Women feel confident only when they're perfect or practically perfect. This fascinated me. So I read more about it. I became more aware of it. I observed it in myself and in the women around me. And I noticed that we don't even know how to accept a compliment without an excuse or some self-deprecating reply. For example, you look really good today. That's the makeup. <laughs> Sounds familiar? Here's another one. You look great. You've lost weight, haven't you? It's the black. Or just last week, my friend said, really? But I've been eating like a cow lately. And even with my female students, you got an A in the exam. This is amazing. Yeah, but it was an easy exam. Ladies, please think back to the last time you accepted a compliment with thank you. Or even just a smile. It was a long time ago, I bet. Maybe never. A lot of nods. Are we that humble? Or is it that we truly underestimate and undervalue ourselves? We really need to think about that. I hate to admit it, but I doubted myself a lot recently. Even when it came to my own talk, I felt I couldn't just stand here and tell you what I was feeling. I needed validation that these feelings were shared by other mothers. Otherwise, why would you even care about my story? So I researched tirelessly, and I conducted a questionnaire. And soon enough, I realized that this wasn't just about me and my experiences. Other women got funny comments when they took their kids to work. Other women struggled to pump milk at work and frequently pumped in the car or in the toilet during their lunch break. And many women struggle with time management, guilt and self-doubt. It's then that I realized that I was describing the stories of so many women and that gave me the confidence to pursue this journey. I can't talk about the struggles of working mothers without addressing the guilt. Every breathing mother has felt mother's guilt. But working mother's guilt, oof, it's something else. Because when you're at work, you feel guilty that you're not with the kids. But then you're with the kids and you feel guilty that you should be working. And it just spirals. I didn't spend enough quality time with the kids. I'm not giving my husband enough attention. <laughs> when was the last time I cooked a decent meal for my family? so behind on work, and the list goes on and on. And the guilt creeps in when we feel we're not doing enough for our kids, for our husband, for our family, for our work, and sometimes even for ourselves. What is going on? This is what I think, in my humble opinion. <laughs> Having children is an incredible, life-changing experience. Our biggest responsibility as parents is to raise honest, responsible, and balanced citizens of society. This takes a lot of love, it takes a lot of work, and it takes a lot of people. Actually, it takes a village. It takes a village to raise a child. This is a well-known African proverb that describes child upbringing as a communal effort. Not long ago, people used to live in multi-generational communities consisting of kids, parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, aunt and cousins. People cared for each other and for each other's children. Of course, parents were the main people raising the children, but they all shared responsibility in teaching them manners and social skills and cultural traditions. I'm sure you've all heard stories from your parents and your grandparents about how they used to spend the whole day playing together. And then they'd gather for dinner with the extended family and listen to stories, and women would help each other cook and clean and discipline the kids. Parents had a lot of support back then. But today, we live in a villageless society. Today, the responsibility of raising children rests on the shoulders of two parents, and in many cases, just on the mums. Without the support of a village, parents, especially mums, are under a lot of pressure to compensate for what whole communities used to provide. We don't have kids playing all day in the neighborhood together anymore. Instead, we send them to summer camps. And we drive them to scheduled play dates and to sports, music, art and dance lessons. We don't have extended families next to us. And even if we do, we're too ashamed to ask them for help. We think we're strong and independent. We shouldn't need anyone's help. And if it's not the shame in asking, 
It's that instinctive maternal feeling of, I'm the mum. It's my job to take care of my own children. But if we keep trying to do this all by ourselves, or with little help from others, we'll continue to feel this way. Okay, I didn't mean to sound so dramatic. <laughs> it doesn't have to be like this. We can do something about it. First up, I know it's a big call, but we need to think big. We must revise policies. We must revise policies to allow for greater paid parental leave and more flexible working hours for new mums. This should include measures to allow breastfeeding women the right to pump several times during the workday or at least reduce the workday without salary cuts. This is typically the case, not only in the Western world, but in nearby Qatar, Egypt and the UAE. Access to paid parental leave is a global issue. In 2014, the Lebanese law granted 10 weeks of paid maternity leave. Sure, that was an improvement, but the International Labour Organization recommends a minimum 14-week leave period and urges countries to extend this to at least 18 weeks. Come on, Lebanon, we can do better. How about the dads? Well, the dads are entitled to three days of paid paternity leave. Yeah, three full days, and even that was considered generous by members of parliament as if three days is plenty of time for a dad to nurture and help with his newborn. Come on, Lebanon, we can do better. Now, while we wait for our government to sort itself out, create your own modern day village. Ask your loved ones for help. Share responsibilities, delegate. You shouldn't feel that you have to do this by yourself. I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for my village, my mum, my husband, my best friends, my mother-in-law. I love them all, and believe it or not, my Facebook groups and my online forums. <laughs> we need each other, there's no shame in that. And lastly, let, sh let it go, let go of the perfectionism and the high expectations of yourself. I know how hard this is, but we can't expect to be perfect patient nurturing mums amazing wives and lovers, caring daughters, sisters and friends, while excelling in our ever-demanding careers and trying to look like a 25-year-old supermodel. <laughs> Stop it! Accept yourself and practice self-compassion. And when those guilt pangs do creep in, acknowledge and appreciate all that you do at home, with the kids, with your husband, with your family, in your community and at work. And oh my goodness, we do so much. I changed my mind. We do deserve that superhero cape, right? <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's wrap up. I didn't realize that the questionnaire would have such an impact on the mothers, but clearly they wanted to be heard. So I guess I'm their voice. And on their behalf, I'd love for you to think about what you can do for a struggling mum near you today. As a friend, maybe offer to bring a home-cooked meal once in a while. You know that delivery menu is getting pretty boring. As a sister, offer to babysit and give that mum some quality me time. Because you know that quick five-minute shower? It's not me time. As a husband, Start paying attention to the support you can provide at home. Look, most men have great intentions but it's simply that they wait to be told what to do. No, take the wheel for a bit. Let's all share the weight of a village that's resting on mum's shoulders. And maybe then they can let go a bit and enjoy a few well-deserved breaks, guilt free. So this is for all the working mothers here today and for the working mothers at home, the super moms and the future working mothers and our husbands, the working fathers, and our sisters, mums, friends and colleagues. Be aware of the challenges that lie beneath the invisible cape of a working mother. Awareness is key. Sheryl Sandberg said it beautifully. We cannot change what we are not aware of, and once we are aware, we cannot help but change. Thank you.